I was going to start this off originally by putting in a clip from the critic of Orson Welles saying something around the lines of uh, something about the living will and then laughing. I wasn't able to find that clip in time, unfortunately. So I couldn't do that. And, uh, unfortunately, I can't do a very good Orson Welles impression at all. So I'm just going to say, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to First Reaction for Hyde. I am the Immortal Cave and Sam we trust .blogspot.ca. As usual, I'll put a link to my blog in the description. And, um... Oh, boy. This was an interesting one. This... This was not well, This is the other one I was really looking forward to. When the first four episodes got announced of Series 7, this part of Series 7, as I'm calling it, or actually Series 7, Series 6.5 was the other one. Uh, when it comes to uh, Series 7, there was two episodes I was really looking forward to, which was Cold War because of the Ice Warriors, and Hyde because I love horror. Rings of Akatan was a very pleasant surprise, let's just put it that way. And Bells of St. John I was looking forward to mostly because of the fact that it was the beginning of Series 7, and, well, that's pretty much all it was good for. <laughs> anyway, Hyde is a very, um... Okay, for, uh, let, let me just say, first of all, spoilers, obviously, spoilers. If you've seen any of my videos, you know there's spoilers, but I'm saying it anyway for anybody who hasn't seen, seen one of these before. <clears throat> um... Hyde was a little bit different than I was expecting, but at the same time, kind of the exact same. That sounds really strange, but I'm going to have to get into details. Hyde, I was expecting something closer to... How do I word it? I was expecting something closer to almost... Like, Blink. Where, um... Where it was kind of like this very focused, very thematic, very um, tone-centered story that was very yeah, it had a lot of horror elements. It was very creepy. There were a couple of creepy elements. Most notably, whatever the hell that creature was at the end. Jesus, that thing was messed up looking for Doctor Who. But I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Um, but it wasn't really that. Uh, the first half is uh, the Doctor and Clara investigating the mansion with... Uh, I can't think of their names, so I'm just going to call them Egon and... Uh, Sigourney Reaver's character from Ghostbusters, whose name I can't remember. I'm just going to call them Egon and Sigourney. Cough. Um, where uh, those two were investigating the mansion because of ghost sightings, because of this uh, ghost haunting there called the Witch of the Well. Now, this actually uh, all went together really well. Uh, actually, I'll say it right now, this is a really good episode. Uh, much like, you know, uh, the trend has been going, the only difference is that uh, it didn't really have a slow start. I actually thought it started quite well. So this is actually the most consistently good episode of... Uh, Season 7, or Series 7 so far. At least in my opinion, of course. I, sh I should have said that a long time ago. All of this is obviously in my opinion. Um, and what I consider to make a good episode. I should have said that a long time ago, but... I'm saying it now. Anyway. Um, where was I? Oh, yes. And, uh... It was, it was a very consistently good episode. Like, it, it didn't have a slow start, and it just went really good. What its weakness is, though, like I said, I was expecting this to be a very straightforward, good old-fashioned haunted house episode. I was thinking something like a Night Terrors, which in terms of horror is still my favorite uh, horror Doctor Who episode. The Midnight is... I wouldn't call that horror as much as tension or suspense, so I'm not quite sure how to, where to put that. But anyway, those, those two episodes are very excellent in terms of horror episodes. Go watch them, for the love of God. Watch this episode, too, though. Anyway. Um, this... Hmm. I'm not sure where I would rank this. Like I said, the main problem with it is about halfway through, the Doctor and Clara start going through different times and taking photographs of that same area. And it completely breaks up the tone. 
that's the thing. So the tone of it's not is broken up and how do I word this? When there were so many uh, actually I just remembered something that I'm gonna bring up right now. Remember how the first few episodes, like the first five, and now that I think about it, the rest of them were all named after movies. Asylum of the Daleks, Asylum of the Damned, I think. I, I honestly don't remember, to be honest with you. Asyl Asylum of the something. So, Asylum of the Daleks. Second episode, um... Oh, Dinosaurs on a Spaceship, Snakes on a Plane, duh. I can't remember the one for, um... A Town Called Mercy. Power of Three, I think that was actually just a direct movie name. And Angels Take Manhattan, I think it was Jason Takes Manhattan? Kind of hope it wasn't, because that movie was really strange. Anyway... And now that I think about it, I think some of the, the newer episodes might have been named after that, too, because Journey to the Center of the TARDIS is the next episode. And that's obviously a movie reference. Or a reference in general, I should say. But the more I think about it, they've been kind of taking certain cues from movies as well. Last week I mentioned how Cold War had, uh, near the end, started resembling Alien. This one starts resembling Poltergeist. Which makes sense, I mean, you know... Horror, horror. And Poltergeist was a very good movie, and I would actually compare it to Hyde in terms of quality, and co comparatively speaking, of course. Um, which one would I watch first? I don't know. <laughs> it's been so long since I watched Poltergeist, I couldn't tell you. But anyway, um, it, it does have a lot of similarities to it, in the sense that uh, there was one scene in particular where the, the psychic, the, the empathetic empathic, I can't, I can't think of what her name, Sigourney, Sigourney Weaver's character from Ghostbusters, whose name I can't remember, that, that woman, the female person, um, she, uh, opened up a hole into this pocket dimension, I should probably explain what the twist is, again, spoilers if you haven't already taken my advice on that, what it is, is, it's not a ghost, is it's a uh, one of the first human time travelers, sent back, ex accidentally got put into a pocket dimension. And she's basically, the still frames of, because every time they take a picture of this ghost and it's in the same position, it's not in the same position as it's moving so slowly through time. One second for her is about a hundred million years for everybody else. Which is why he went through time and took the pictures and basically took a slideshow of just, you know, uh, of her moving, and that's how we found it out. But anyway, what ended, what ended up happening was she opened up a rift into this pocket dimension. So the doctor, go in, rescue her. And there was this thing chasing her as well, and I'll get into that in a minute, believe me. That was actually really creepy. But anyway. Um, goes in and rescues her. That scene is almost... The, the very first exorcism scene, when they thought everything was fixed in Poltergeist, where the, uh, the psychic opens up that rift and they get the, they get the girl back, I think. It's, again, it's been a few years since I've seen Poltergeist. But where the, there's that doorway and everything's glowing, it's, it's almost right out of it. And I, I, I do think it works for what they were doing. It made sense. And I... I wouldn't directly call it a ripoff. I I would call it more of a homo a more of an homage, homage, homage. Akaten. Anyway, um, I I do think the episode worked, did work quite well, and I have to actually get into this now because I've, I've mentioned it a few times this monster that's chasing her. <laughs> that is, that is legitimately one of the creepiest things I have ever seen in Doctor Who. Just the design of this thing, you only really, like, you see it a few times, and it just looks like this. It looks like a cross between, like, oh, how do I even describe this? It looks like the cross between a Komodo dragon and a rotting corpse. And when you see it up close, you can see the rotting corpse. And again, Doctor Who. Rotting corpse. Doctor Who. One plus one equals fish. You know, it, it doesn't quite add up. 
um, it it is you know as you know a 24 year old man it was pretty cool looking and the effect was it, it actually did look really nice I actually have to admit for something that it wasn't in many shots and the animation they always use for the shots of him where they would show like uh, there was a very brief scene where they showed it running towards a door and its movement was very jerky and very just unnatural and it, it looked really cool you know, and I, I mean unnatural in a good way, not like it looked like a puppet. Like, I mean, it was just like, it, it just... I don't know any way to describe it without really describe it over vocals, because it's kind of hard to describe movement like that. But like I said, it was very jerky, very um, just unsettling looking It's in its movement and in its appearance. And I had to give credit, that was actually pretty cool. Though I will say... The very end twist of that was kind of odd. Wouldn't say weak. Necessarily. But I would say very odd. Which was that this creature was not in fact um, trying to kill anybody. The woman, the doctor, anybody. Though this thing is goddamn creepy. And it seems like it was laughing constantly. Maybe that was just the sound it makes. I don't know. But, uh, what it was is it and apparently its mate. Once you see this creature and you think it's mate, you're going to start laughing. Or just think it's really strange. When you see this creature, you'll know what I mean. But uh, looking for its mate because when this pocket dimension formed, they got separated. The other one being inside of the mansion, which caused a few supernatural moments. Now, I will admit, actually, this thing is rather damn creepy. Again, it is rather damn creepy looking, and the moments where you could just see it in the shadows, or in a reflection, or something like that, goddamn, it actually is pretty goddamn creepy. But again, it's that breakup in the middle that kind of breaks the tone that I, I'm not a fan of, and the very end was kind of weird. But it was good. It was a very good episode. You know, it's, it's continuing the trend of this kind of odd slow start thing that seems to be happening with us. Because when Series 7 started, Series 7, as I see it, started with the Bells of St. John. Bells of St. John was a very weak episode. I don't think anybody of us, any of us can deny that. The second episode, uh, Rings of Akaten, which I actually think should have been called Song of Akaten. Maybe that's just me. but uh, or, so, or something like that. Lullaby of Sokotan, or some, some shit like that. Was, so I had a very slow start, but it was really, really good. And then Cold War, same deal. But it was uh, slightly shorter. of the Slightly less of the start was slow. And I think that worked out very well. This one has no slow start, and it's just really good all through. Again, a little weird par weird parts, but... This is it's this weird pattern I seem to be noticing with this season so far, is that it's a really slow start. And if it continues like this, Journey to the Center of the TARDIS should be an excellent episode. And it looks like an excellent episode from what I've seen so far. So, you know, I'm very excited for that, for, the, for that episode. Then um, I think it's Crimson Threat after that, Silver Nightmare. And I should probably get into this now because this is the part of the video where I usually go after go over things that are going to be happening in the future of Doctor Who. Number one, confirmed, I believe confirmed, for the 50th anniversary is the Saigons, which I believe were confirmed a couple weeks ago, and now the Cybermen and the Daleks as well. So I'm glad for that, because if the Zygons were the only enemy, I would have been kind of a little... not disappointed, because I am excited to see the Zygons again, but very underwhelmed, I think is the word. No, if it's all if it's all three of them, eh, we're getting there. You know, I, th I think that's a lot better, and especially with the Daleks, because, uh, like I said, there's only really two things that should be the main villain for that, which is Davros and the Master. The Daleks, I will accept it with the Cybermen and the Zygons, and potentially more. But uh, you know, that that's really cool, and I'm really, I'm really happy for that. But. Here's where things start getting kind of interesting. 
they, um, the main thing of this season so far has been Clara, and finding out who she is. And the only theory that I've found, and this is the, only, the one I'm going by because I can't think of anything else that makes sense, even though this doesn't really make that much sense in general, but I'm getting what I can here because I'm still kind of mind-boggled, is that she's the Doctor's granddaughter, Susan Foreman, in some regenerated state where she forgot. Or, like, actually... Was it her mother that died? I can't remember right now. Because I think she might be the offs the daughter of a Time Lord. Maybe that might do something. But I'm thinking she's either the Doctor's granddaughter, potentially the Doctor's daughter, now that I think about it, because um, Jenny was still alive at the end of that episode. I said spoilers. Um, at the end of the Doctor's daughter. So it could be either one of them regenerated, or it could be the offspring of one of them. But I, that's what I think she is. I say this because the name of the season finale for Series 7 has been announced as the name of the Doctor. And Alex Kingston's going to be in it, so we're assuming this is probably when she finds out what his name is. Huh. I should... Okay, I'm going to get into this right now. And I'll probably actually slightly rename the episode something like... Uh, Doctor Who First Reaction Hide, and me ranting about something. Or, like, um, my thoughts on the... my thoughts on Doctor Who? I don't know. What this is, is... When Season 6 ended, I think this was a very good ending in terms of cinematics, and in terms of being a really good bookend to it. I'm not quite sure if bookends are quite, quite the right word I'm looking for, but it was a really good end to it cinematically and dramatically. Season 6 was, you know, uh, Fields of Trenzalore, Fall of the 11th, blah, 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 blah. Mm. Uh, Doctor Who. And... I believe when that first came out, I posted on my blog something around the lines of, you know, the picture of the Tenth Doctor is going, what? And I, that's still kind of my thoughts on this. I'm still very... I'm conflicted about the thoughts of actually giving out the Doctor's name. I'm assuming this is only going to be in whispers and we're not actually going to hear it. But even then, I'm still very... I'm still very conflicted about the idea of actually throwing around the Doctor's name. Because this is the big mystery. The show is called Doctor Who. So actually giving out the Doctor's name, or throwing around the Doctor's name, is... I don't know, it almost feels sacrilegious to me. And I'm very... I'm excited for it, don't misunderstand me. And I think it as a dramatic point, and as a seasonal point, I am very excited. You know, I do think it works very good dramatically. It's just it's the 50th anniversary, I get that, but Doctor Who is the name of the show. If we find out his name is Greg, Doctor Greg doesn't quite have that same ring, does it? I'm not expecting him to change the name if his name is Greg. Or something stupid. And he better not be, like, some important, like, character in history. Like, if I find out his, he's, like, I, I can't even think of anything. Not anything that I want to say right now. Because anything that's coming to mind right now is really, like, astronomically stupid. But, just, I, I'm very, I'm nervous, I'm excited, and I'm very interested. I will say that, but I am very... There's a couple words that are coming to my mind right now, and the only thing I can think of ending this with right now is, you better not fuck this up. That's my thoughts on the name of the Doctor. You better not fuck this up. 
because this could go this this could be really interesting and really good and really grabbing. This could also be a goddamn train wreck. Do not end what is becoming one of the best seasons of Doctor Who in a, since season six, which is my favorite. In my opinion, again. Do not end what is one of my favorite seasons in Doctor Who so far with something stupid. Especially on that size. You gotta be careful, Moffat. Be very careful. Like, I'm not expecting him to, you know, drive it off a cliff, so to speak, but... You know, I... I as a writer, Moffat's really good. Stephen Moffat's really, really good. It's just that I'm... I'm worried. You gotta understand my, uh... Anxiety there. Anyway, now that I'm done ranting about that... Hyde was a really good episode. Hyde was a really cool episode. Hyde was a really consistent episode. It follows the trend of this season getting better and better. But I'm still not quite sure how I would place it next to Cold Cold War. I'd say it's about it's about even. Maybe a little better than Cold War, actually. Rings of Akaten. That's where I can't figure it out. Because Rings of Akaten's excellent episode. Amazing, amazing, amazing episode. But that at the beginning is really bad. And there are some things near the end as well, so... I kind of want to say Hyde's the best episode of this season. But when Akaten was good, it was... Mm, hard call. Anyway. Hem. I shall see you all next week for Journey to the Center of the TARDIS. These movie references are both entertaining and kind of odd. See you next week.